right before Easter. It's not very far away. I think Easter this year is, uh, I think it's April 4th, isn't it? It moves around by the way the planets move. And uh, is that an equinox or something they look at? But anyway, this year I believe it's April 4th, so this is the last day of February, isn't it? Yes. It's not a leap year. And then the next day, we go into March, right? Monday? And uh, so, Easter's coming pretty soon. And by then, I hope the weather will be a lot better. It's, it's getting there. It's a lot better now than it was. Most of the snow is melting. And temperature's gotten up into the 50s. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? And, uh, but I kind of favor the warm weather over the cold. Uh, but this morning we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 3 and verses 20 to 22. And we'll talk about there is no difference. Amen. There is no difference. Romans chapter 3 and verses 20 to 22. And uh, I told Carol this would be a short sermon and she laughed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think she thinks I'm capable of doing a short sermon. I'd be like the preacher takes his watch off and looks at it and lays over on the pulpit and they say, what that mean? He said, absolutely nothing. He's not going to look at the time. But I do have a clock up here. And I, I do kind of keep an eye on it. But uh, I wanted to talk this morning about there is no difference. And we are, like I say, going into near Easter and Lent and what have you. And of course, Lent, they give up stuff, don't they? Make a sacrifice for the Lord. And then they have Ash Wednesday and they put a cross of ashes on their forehead and repent. And I don't think putting ashes on your forehead is much about repenting, but I think if your heart would change, that'd be repentance. Amen. I believe that's what we need in our America today is a heart change. I guess you could say a heart transplant. And the doctor that did that, was it in Africa? Did the first heart transplant? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I, uh, I remember reading about that. <laughs> well, I don't know, it's odd the things that come to my mind. Bernard. Yeah, that's the Bernard. South Africa. South Africa. I had the Africa part right, right? In the 70s? I think but I think God did heart transplants before that. Amen, Dr. Grace. And he put the heart in there, whatever heart you had to start with. But he can change your heart too, can he? Mm -hmm. And how does he change it? Through us repenting and putting our faith in that Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. Amen. Now repenting means you're sorry for your sins. That doesn't necessarily mean you just shed some tears has to be for real, doesn't it? Amen. But I was, what well, went through my mind, that maybe I should or should not tell you, but I'll say it anyway. Back when I was in the, in the uh, high school, they had the first sex transplant, transplants, changing people's sex. Then it was over in Sweden. In the Netherlands, and not in the Netherlands, uh, Scandinavian countries. Back then, to have sex education in the schools was, oh, they were unheard of to do that. But I had a class that I think he had to be a senior in my high school to take it, it was called Family Living. Now, I don't even know if they have that anymore, but if they did, I don't know what they would say a family was. Some of these shows they put on TV, some of these series, don't they have some of those where they're, they're not what the Bible considers a family, a husband, a wife, and children. And then we got such a situation now where people don't even know whether they're a boy or a girl. And then the guys want to compete with the girls in sports. Or they want to use whatever bathroom they want. And then, they, you know, they want to pass laws saying that if you don't like this stuff, they can put you in jail. 
or take you to court. Well, that's not where I want to go. Look at Romans chapter 3 and go down to verse 20. Romans chapter 3 and we're going to read from verse 20, 22. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Well, somebody says, well, if I'm real good and I keep all the laws, then that'll get me into heaven? Well, that word right there didn't say it. It's the opposite of that. The Lord says in his word, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. How do we even know what sin is? How do we know what a family is? Well, I, my worldview is based on the Bible. What's yours? Amen. What's your worldview based on? Well, I'll tell you what, if it's, uh, I don't know what I, the word I would want to use, the culture of our day, you're going to have a messed up worldview. That's right. They don't even know where they are, where they came from, where they're going, or why they're here. That's right. Do you know the answers to any of those questions? Praise the Lord, yes. Well, how do you know? I, I base mine on the Bible. What do they base theirs on? Hollywood? Customs? Right here it says in this 20th verse, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified by in his sight, for the law is the knowledge of sin. How do we know what sin, what's right and wrong? Well, we got laws. You know, some laws, I believe, that we've passed are wrong. If you compare them with God's law and the world, America's law, some of our laws are wrong. That's right. Verse 21, But now the righteous of, righteousness of God without the law is manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So we know what the law is or what God's law is by studying our Bible. The law... And, uh, you know, the first five books, are they consider the law? We call them the Pentateuch. Moses wrote them. You get the Ten Commandments in there, right? And a lot of other laws, too, by that, for that matter. There's about 600 laws in there. Of course, you get depends on which commentary you read, five or 600. But most people don't even know it. It says, don't eat any roast ostafrage. I don't even know what an ostafrage is. It's probably something like a vulture or a bird that eats about anything and everything. And they were given a lot of those laws going through the wilderness because you might eat something that'll give you a disease. Now I'll tell you what, I knew about wearing masks a long time ago uh, in the Bible. They told the lepers to put a mask over their face. They didn't tell everybody else to put a mask over their face. They told the sick people to put it mask over their face. But now we've got to turn and just about like everything, we just turn it all around backwards. Isn't that about what we're seeing? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. But I'll tell you what, you can read your Bible and know what it says, but if your heart disagrees with it, you, you can disagree with God. Or you can agree with God. And you have to make a choice. Don't you have to make a choice? Yes. So, oh no, I won't make a choice. Then you're not agreeing with God. That's right. So you made a choice when you said, you, I'm not making. That's an absolute, right? Well, there's no absolutes. Now, in English, they did tell me never say never and don't say always. But I'm never going to hell. Amen. Right. Verse 22. Even the righteous of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and unto uh, upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Now, one thing back there in verse 21, he says, But now the righteousness of God without the law. Do you really, do you have a conscience? Is there something in you, even if you didn't know much about your Bible? You do certain things, you feel guilty? Yes, sir. Wonder who put that in there? You think maybe God put that, that uh, conscience in people? You think people ought to feel guilty when they hurt somebody else? 
Well, but some people say, oh, I'm helping people. I'm not hurting them. Sometimes when they think they're helping, they're hurting. And sometimes we might think when we're hurting people, we're helping them. Somebody says, how can that be? Well, I tell you what, I think I ought to preach. If you don't get saved, you're going to die and go to hell. And somebody says, well, you're hurting them. Matter of fact, we had a film back when Martin back there got saved called The Burning Hell in our church. And a few uh, days, I think it was days, not weeks, after that we're going door to door and this fellow said, oh, your church is that church that had that film, The Burning Hell. And you don't know what kind of damage you're doing to the little kids, scaring them like that. I told him, I said, well, they show worse than that on TV all the time. And we had three people get saved because we showed that film. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think we had a record attendance. About 73 people came. Somebody said, well, you mean you've had that many people in your church before? Now we're doing pretty good to get three. Especially on Wednesday night Sunday night. Usually on Sunday morning we still over 10. I like at least staying double figures, right? Well, the devil tell me, well, I'll just shut that thing down. It's not worth keeping it open. They ought to go to some big church, you know. Yes, sir, if I lived in Noblesville, Indiana, or right around it, I know where I'd go to church. <laughs> I'm standing here right now where I'd go. But yes, we have a conscience, but the, where my text comes from, really, uh, the title of the sermon was, There is no difference. And so look at verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Everybody gets saved the same way. There's only one way to get saved. Some people think there's a Baptist way or a Methodist way or a Presbyterian way or a Catholic way. Or I don't know, I guess you could be an agnostic and say, but I'm moral. Will morals save you? Well, who decides what morals are? Well, I don't know. I just... Feels good, do it. And as society did it. But you know, like I say, there's people that think they've got different uh, ways of getting saved. There's only one way to get saved. There is no difference. God will only save you one way, and I've got about four things I want to mention here. There's no difference. You know, we look around, there's black people, white people, oriental people. Then they say brown people. That, one, that one's a newer one to me. Is that the Hispanic people? I guess. So. I think that's what, what they're getting at. I got a little Italian in me. I had one black lady I mean, tell me, says, well, you're kind of dark colored. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> we're actually all shades of brown. But well, we're nice. all from God. <laughs> There's only one race. It's called the human race. Amen. And whether, if you trace it back, whether they like it or not, we all go back to two people, Adam and Eve. That's right. If it wasn't for Adam and Eve, you wouldn't be here. But there, Adam and Eve wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for God. That's right. Just keep going back. But some people don't want to go back. And if they get to the history, they mess it up and they change it. And they distort it. That's true. Uh, and we ought to be honest with our history. Yes, there was slavery in America. But what country, the very few countries, I don't know how many countries in the world never ever had any kind of slavery. It happened at since Nimrod. I don't think, I don't know if there is any. And so, you know, uh, we, we ought to have all this guilt. Yes, we ought to have some guilt. We're all sinners. Every single one of us. You know, there's differences. Women are different than men. Amen. But some will agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And there are some people have light colored skin, some people have dark colored skin. And then there's all kinds of variations in between it. That's right. Now I don't think that's the important thing. I think it's how you treat any other human. Amen. I don't care what color their skin is, they're human beings. God created them in His image. Amen. And we ought to have respect for each other. That's right. And they don't even know what tolerance is. Tolerance is when you don't agree with somebody on something, but yet you can live with them anyway. Well, their idea of tolerance is you've got to believe my way or no way. That's not tolerance. Well, we, we had tolerance when I was growing up and through all of that, but finally, you know, they did pass some laws. There's, there's segregation laws, mainly back in the 60s. Now they want to refight all the same battles over again. Enforce the laws you've got. If you discriminate against somebody over race, that's illegal. If you won't let them rent a house because of their race, that's, that's illegal. I had no choice that I was born white, if you call this white. If I'd been born black, I'd been... Yeah. And I was born a man. I was born a woman. Or I wouldn't have married her. <laughs> Amen. Well, I could not. Maybe I shouldn't. I could ask you, would you have married me if I was born? <laughs> you might get some strange answers in this day and age. Or what if I didn't know what I was? So there's a lot of differences. But as far as God looks at us, doesn't matter what color your skin is, what sex you are, whether you're educated or uneducated, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're conservative or liberal. God looks at us all the same way. We're all sinners. Every one of us, we're all sinners. So we look around, we see differences, but when God looks at us, I believe He loves all of us. Believe me, well, that was the whole world. I get into that, but I wanted to do a little talking about something here. And in the next verse in our text, there it said that for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The twenty-first verse, I believe, verse twenty-one. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that uh, believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when God looks at mankind, we're all sinners. Right. Somebody says, Well, I don't know. Uh, Rebecca back there's never sinned. Well, how old is Rebecca? About to be 10 months. Almost 10 months. Well, I doubt she's robbed any banks. Hey, I doubt she's forged any checks. <laughs> huh? Somebody says, well, how can you say when God sees her, He sees her as a sinner? Well, if you go back to Psalms chapter 51, the fellow named David's talking there. He says, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We were born with a sin nature. Now, if you uh, let a child just grow up on their own, you don't teach them right from wrong. Which way you think? Do you think they'll do right or wrong? They'll do some wrong. Even if you try to teach them right, they still might do some wrong. I've had a little experience with that with Martin and Brian. I'm sure my mom and dad had it with me. One, one, one fellow was... Uh, a black fellow talking to a, a white preacher, and the black fellow said, well, uh, asked the white preacher, says, uh, what's a white guy have to get do to get saved? And he said, well, they have to repent of their sins, be sorry for their sins, and want to change, and pray and ask God to save them. 
And the black guy said, hmm. He said the same thing black guy has to do. Hey, man. <laughs> or a brown guy, or a woman, or a man. Or if you're educated or not educated. That's right. Another fellow, he would go into a foreign country and he, he was talking to a policeman in that foreign country. And he asked this policeman, he says, you really think you need policemen in this country? And the guy said, the policeman said, oh yeah, he says, our people are mean. And he said, well, what do you do with people when they're criminals? He said, well, we do the same thing you do in the United States, we put them in jail. And he said, then if there's some really bad ones, real bad ones. He said, we do what you call capital punishment. He said, we shoot them. Well, it goes back to that sin nature. Why do people kill people? Does the Bible say to kill people? It says, thou shalt not, says, thou shalt not kill. It says, you're not supposed to lie and you're not supposed to steal. But people do it. Of course, then you can get in, I guess, what the call situation is. But this says there's no difference. When God looks at us, He sees us all as sinners. We're born with a sin nature. Maybe a little child hasn't gotten into sin yet. You can't get into sin though you know what's right and wrong. And I don't think Rebecca knows enough to know what's right and wrong. When she's hungry, you cry. She's uncomfortable, she lets you know. She'll look at you. And then it's your job, your job to take care of her. You're responsible for that. And she has every right to complain. Amen. When she's not comfortable. Daddy dropping the ball. But there's no difference. We're all sinners, regardless of your race, sex, education, wealth. Uh, we're all sinners. God looks down, sees. No difference. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20 says, Where there is, uh, For there is no just man uh, upon the face of the earth, and doeth good and sinneth not. There's no one. When we get around to it, we'll all sin. And some people will debate the question, like I said, what about children? Well, there's an age, I think, that you get to where God will hold you responsible. But honestly, I believe if you die before that age, before you understand it, you'll go to heaven myself. But now I'm, I could get in trouble saying that. But I believe the Scripture gives you an indication. David had a little baby die. Amen. That's, That's usually true. one of the best arguments you can have. Um, so, you know, we, we see these things. But even though... We don't know anything about the Bible. We don't know what right and wrong is. Can God work on our conscience when we do something? You say, well, I shouldn't have done that. Well, God's put something in mankind to try to help us. But then He tried, He wanted to help you even more, so He gave you the Word of God. Amen. And so you can read your Bible. Matter of fact, I think you'll go hear a good preacher, a preacher, a Sunday school teacher teach. And they can teach you what the Bible has to say. But as far as God looks at us, we're all sinners. As it is written, there are none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10, Romans 3.24 uh, talks about that. As it is written, there are none righteous, no, not one. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Amen. Or if we want to be like God, would that be perfect? Any perfect people you know of? Just Jesus. Just Jesus. But He was God. That's right. <laughs> now some don't even believe that. That is ridiculous. Deity of Christ, they don't believe it. They are lost. And some people don't see anything wrong with thinking that way. But I think there's a lot of evidence that He was God. In flesh, yeah. virgin born, never ever sinned one time. Mm -hmm. Died on the cross. Made a way for us to go to heaven. But He had to do that because we were all sinners. And if He hadn't come down here and taken on a human body, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and somebody had to pay for the sin, then you really basically have two choices. You either pay or let God pay for you. That's, That's the only two choices I know of. Somebody says, oh, well, if I, my good outweighs my bad. Well, I hate to tell you, but you won't like me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Your good won't outweigh your bad. That's right. Never. I was reading something from Dr. McGee this week, and I thought it was really good. And he was talking, because I've been studying on uh, Hebrews there where it says we're tempted and always like as, Jesus was tempted like as, uh, always like as we are. Right, in all points, yeah. All points like as we are. And I've been studying that. But there's one big difference in Jesus and us. He never ever sinned. Amen. Now, if you keep resisting, will the pressure keep building? Well, most all of us, uh, you, you probably got a lower pressure point than Jesus. Apparently you do because He never ever sinned. There was a point where you did. Now the Lord also, and I like the verses in 1 Corinthians 10.13 or 10.31, I get them turned around, yes. where it says, uh, He won't let us be tempted above what it we're able. Amen. Well, let's see if we can find that. 1 Corinthians and uh, verse 10. And, uh, you, when I read it, you say, oh, I'm familiar with that. 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, Paul had to write these people two letters to help them get straightened out. Something he wrote them three. But I've got two in my Bible, so I'll go with that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Anything you've suffered, some other person suffered. Anything you've been tempted to do, somebody else has been tempted to do it. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, we can look at a couple different things and look at that. I think he's probably talking to Christians. But, even though he knows how much we can stand, it's kind of difficult there. But it says he'll make a way to escape. The way to escape, if nothing else, even if you fell into sin, how would you escape? Ask God to forgive you. God provided something for you, didn't He? Even if I do do something wrong, can I go to God? Saved or lost, I could do that, right? That's right. But if I'm lost... I need to really get right and get saved first. But God's, God's made a way. Are you going to take God's way? Amen. And it's the same way for all of us. Whether it's a man or a woman, whatever race, whatever education. And there's only one way. Jesus said, I, in John 14, He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I think that's about verse 3. I don't know. It's 1 through about 4, 5, 6, down in there. But it's there. You can find it. But you know, there's no difference. Uh, all of us are sinners. There's no difference in God's love. Do you believe God loves everybody? Mm -hmm. Even a mean, wicked person? Well, that was all of us. Mm -hmm. He still loved us. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say we well, have to turn your life around and you can get real good and then I'll save you. He said, I'll save you the way you are and then I'll help you turn your life around. Not only that, if you slip and fall in the process, I'll help you get up by you confessing your sins and asking me to forgive you. I'll forgive you. But yes, I, I, I believe God loves everybody. Romans 5, 8, But God commends His love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
And you all know John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Did he provide enough on the cross to save the whole world? I believe he did. Not everybody will receive it, but he offers it. He loved the whole world enough to provide salvation for the whole world if they will receive it. Now there's what they call, some people you want to get into theology and stuff, uh, general call and effectual, and effectual call. The right. general call is to the whole world. That's right. But it's not going to have much effect unless you receive it. It's a gift. Amen. But if you won't take the gift, it's good, then God didn't send you to hell. You sent yourself to hell. And then I like 1 John 2, 2, and He's a propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. So that's enough to establish, does God love the whole world? Yes, sir. So I had two points. First of all, we're all sinners. The second thing, uh, God loves us all. Forget this race stuff. Amen. That's all I want to talk about anymore. Isn't it? It's political. Yeah. More than anything. They've got laws if they enforce them. It's funny to me what they enforce and what they don't. Whether you... There's no difference in the provision that God made for the for our redemption. 1 Peter chapter 1 Verses 18 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold for your, uh, for your vain conversation received by tradition uh, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. You can't buy salvation with gold or silver or somebody would sure be buying it. Well, if you want to go back, I'd give you an example. Indulgences. That's right, they did that back in the day. Back in, Martin Luther didn't like it because you could go out and sin all you wanted as long as you brought enough money in church on Sunday and put an offering plate. They'd sell you an indulgence. Where do you find that in the Bible? Well, I think they were going up and too, was it... Uh, Peter and John or something. And, and, and the, the guy was asking alms and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such have I have I give unto you. Rise up and walk. Amen. And he got up and he started jumping and shouting. And That's a good one. He's ready to go to church. I don't think Jesus had a lot of silver or gold. I don't think the Apostle Paul did. But they'd go around and tell people how they could get into heaven through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist sees Jesus come and says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But that Lamb had to be sacrificed, and Jesus was the ultimate Passover Lamb. Amen. And I believe He died at the time of the Passover. That's right. Very simple. If you study your Bible, I think you could come up with that. But some people won't study the Bible even enough to even get saved. Song says, I am redeemed, but not with silver. I am bought, but with not with gold. Bought with the precious the blood of Jesus, precious price of love untold. How much would how much would be salvation be worth in dollars? Well, then, you know, when I was growing up, if, if you had a million, man, you were. Then it now it's up to a billion. Yeah. Won't be long and be a trillion. I don't know what comes after a trillion, you math guys. A what? A zillion. A zillion? It could. If you stacked a zillion up, how tall would it be? <laughs> and one dollar bills. What would a trillion stack look like? You know, after you get a few million, I don't know what else you would need to get through life. I don't, I don't understand some people. The Bible says you ought to be content with what you have. Amen. 
Some people aren't going to be content no matter what they have. They're going to want more and more and more and more. And that, if that's the case, you'll probably never make it to heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom and the heaven. That's what the Bible says. Amen. There's no difference in the way we get to heaven. There's some people that think, like I say, there's a Methodist way, a Baptist way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, there's only one way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. And Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. But people try to make all kinds of ways. Back in the a book of Proverbs, verses uh, Proverbs 14, 12, and Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I, I kind of feel like that probably is they're trying to work their way to heaven somehow. That's what most people think. If my good outweighs my bad. Well, I don't know. If we did a report card on church attendance, tithing, witnessing, praying. You, you know, you used to be, everybody could get an A in citizenship. Couldn't they? Maybe, maybe you didn't get an A in anything else, but you could, that and gym. You could do pretty good in gym. Huh? I don't think God grades on a curve. I had some classes so hard that sometimes they'd grade on a curve because nobody would pass if they didn't. Well, God grades on His plan, which is Jesus dying in your place. But He didn't cut any corners. Amen. Jesus actually came down here, took on a human body, yeah. and died in your place. That's right. Substitutionary death of Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But I think there's more to just saying, well, I believe it. That's right. There has to be a repentance. A lot of people mouth a bunch of words, but they don't really change in their heart. And if you don't change in your heart, you're not saved. That's right. And somebody says, where do you find that? I think I'd go to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. saved. Maybe you'll get saved to you. Now I'm not talking about did you say some words, I'm talking about was there a change in your heart? Amen. If there's a real change in your heart, you'll say the words. Good. little girl was uh, asked her dad on the way to church one night and dad said I want to go to church and get saved and the dad said well you're too little you're too young you you don't know enough about to get saved and but it bothered the dad just so on the way to church he, he gets to church he goes to the preacher and he says now my youngest daughter said she's want to get saved tonight and he says, I don't know if anything will come of it. I kind of doubt it. I think she's just saying that because her older sisters are saved. And uh, so they go on through the service. And when the invitation is given, a little girl comes walking down the aisle, walks right up on the platform, goes right up to the preacher, and she sticks her hand out. you got to go up and shake hands with the preacher get saved, right? And... Uh, and so she says, my daddy said I'm too little, but I'm just right and I want to get saved. Could you imagine one of your girls doing something like that? Be a blessing. That'd be, that'd be great, wouldn't it? And the preacher called the church older worker over and they set her down and talked with her. She took her up and sat and talked with her and tried to explain it. Carol's done that with a lot of young people. You need to be careful with them. Real, older people and young people, we need to be real careful. Because young people, you can kind of get them to say whatever you want them to say. Right. And some older people can get into that. 
but uh, it's best to go over it with them and explain it just as simply as you can. What sin is, what sin isn't, and what you have to do to get saved. And so after the lady had talked with her, uh, she uh, comes off the front row, walks right back up on the platform again, goes up to the preacher, and she said, my daddy was wrong. Jesus was right. Jesus is always right. Amen. If anybody it's wrong, it's us. God does, does God love everyone? The whole world, even the lost people? Even the wicked people? Did Jesus die for the world? So He loved the world enough to die for us. Did He make a way for us all to get saved? Did I give you enough verses on that? Are we all sinners? Do we all need to get saved? Are you saved? If you were to die, would you go to heaven? Somebody says, well, I can't know that until I die. I believe you can. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Either you believe the Bible or you don't. I, I chose years ago. I heard a preacher preaching this morning on TV for a few minutes. I didn't have time to watch it. Uh, he said he he was 96 years old. Amen. And he was preaching. He looked in pretty good shape. And he said, I've been saved for over 60 years. He said he got saved at like 10 years old. But that'd be even more than that, wouldn't it? Yeah, he got saved in his 30s probably. Yeah. But anyway, he said he was 96 and he, he said he was saved for all these years. Amen. Can you know it? 1 John 5.13 says, These things I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And somebody says, well, yeah, I can read the Bible and it says black and white. If I do certain things, I'll be saved. But then I like Romans chapter 8. It says, His Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Would God make an impression on you? That's what this preacher was talking about this morning. That God makes an impression on our hearts. He lets us know. If you don't know, maybe you ought to be talking to God about it. Saying, Lord, I'll, I want to know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I, I know it says it in the Bible, but I want to know it. Well, let's all stand. Let's turn our songbooks to page 375.